we know the basics. We talked about this. I'm sure everybody else has been talking about it. The basics. Uh, it was on the uh, February 3rd. Uh, a train derailed in East Palestine, uh, Ohio, that contained a bunch of chemicals, including clinal, uh, vinyl chloride, which was the big one, but there's a bunch of other ones on there as well. And what happened was it, the train derailed, and I have seen reports, um, and I mean, they're pretty much confirmed at this point, where only one of the compartments that held the vinyl chloride was uh, damaged to the point where they needed to burn it off. All the other ones were just fine. If they did a regular cleanup, they chose to burn all of them as well. So that is one thing to pay attention to on this Ohio thing is they voluntarily chose to burn the entire payload of chemicals uh, when they did not need to do that. So that is definitely something to pay attention to as far as that goes. Another thing, keep in mind, this is going along with deception. Why on earth would they be doing some of this stuff Things don't make sense. Things are not adding up. But another thing to keep in mind is the CDC updated their toxicology report on vinyl chloride in January. They updated their toxicology reports on vinyl chloride in January right before the train derailed in, um, in February in Ohio. The same train that was carrying that exact type of contents so now we've got the cdc here doing something quite fishy keep in mind this isn't something that the cdc updates all the time their last update was in 2006 so after 17 years why would they choose to update it this january right before the train derailed in ohio there's something very off on that the update included cardiac issues due to final uh, vinyl chloride poisoning. We do know that there's other cancers and we know that there's other um, other things that uh, we went over the list last week. I'm not a doctor. I can't pull the list off the top of my head. I, I apologize. Um, but we know that there's a bunch of other cancers and, and things that it causes, but they also updated it for cardiac issues. What's something else that's going on that's causing cardiac issues? Something that I can't say on YouTube. Just something to think about. So Again, things aren't looking uh, all that um, positive as far as that goes. But it doesn't stop there. The train also was not marked for hazardous or hazardous materials as well. So this is another instance of why was the train not pro marked properly? There was over six compartments of chemicals that should have been marked correctly for this. And what that basically allowed, it, it allowed the train to go through the state of Ohio without having to inform the state that there is a hazardous train going through. So nobody knew that it was going through. Nobody knew that it was going through. It just starts to make you wonder, is this a, a bomb plant of some type? It's just something to keep in mind as far as that goes now there's more that really just doesn't make any sense east palestine has a a uh, population of 4700 people but days before the train derailed they launched a digital id called my id so this is something that's been in uh been in the works since uh, late of 2020 and just days before the derailment they launched my id it's a bracelet that allows the scanning of a qr code uh that will bring up a di uh, digital medical records for the person who is wearing it so let's just so far we're not done yet with this we're not done yet but so far we've got the CDC updating their final chloride toxicology the uh, like a month before the train derailed. They didn't mark the train properly for what it need to be, needed to be marked for. They released a digital ID, medical digital ID, days before the event took place. You've got the movie White Noise that we talked about last week is based off of this and the train crash they filmed the train crash for the movie in ohio and some of the people involved with the real thing were actually actors on set for that one 
Then you've got they chose to burn the entire payload of chemicals when they didn't need to do that as well. So we've got all that going on. This is this is the the deception, guys. This is where you have to start looking at these little things and they all come together and you realize what is the plan with this? What are they doing? So something to keep in mind. Um, yeah, like Billy Mays. Wait, there's more. Another thing to keep in mind is we've got the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. They released a report, an article based on the the toxicology and the air movement and who all it will affect and everything like that. But the next day, after they released that, they removed two model images from their article that showed the thickness, like how much chemical is in the air, and the radius of the particle spread, which actually showed it go all across Pennsylvania, the East Coast, up into Canada. It showed all this stuff, but they removed those, um, those models from the article that they released. So now... Now they're, they're hiding things. Who told them to remove that stuff? They didn't give an explanation. It was just gone. It just vanished. It just vanished. So who is behind this? Who, who owned the train? Who was shipping the stuff? All this stuff. Well, the railroad company is called Norfolk Southern Railway. And the people who own it, the owners of it, who are the three... The three companies that I always tell you guys to pay attention to. Vanguard, BlackRock, and State Street. All three of those companies own Norfolk Southern Railway along with J.P. Morgan. So you've got Vanguard, BlackRock, State Street, and J.P. Morgan who are the top dogs of Norfolk Southern. The people who sent this, this train, this bomb, into Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what's their plan with this? What is their plan with this? I've, I've heard a whole bunch of different theories, um, what they could, what, it, what this could be a part of. I don't know what could really, it could really be. Um, we just kind of have to sit back and watch. All we can do is just gather the information that we know is real as it comes in. And when you look at this, it's very important Something I always tell you guys is make sure you don't fall into sensationalism. Uh, there's a lot of that going on today where people will just take the smallest thing and they will run with it and say it's biblical. It's, it's like all the people who, when you see, when you see somebody who, uh, like the latest, uh, what was it? It was like seven years ago. I think it was like six or seven years ago. Sweden talked about uh, an RI, RID, RFID chip where uh, one company was using it for people to like pay for their food, their snacks and enter the building and, and stuff like that. And everybody was saying that's the mark of the beast. Well, no, it's not the mark of the beast. It is a stepping stone to it. It's a precursor to it. It's, it's a push towards it. It's something that we can watch and go, that's, we can see where that's going to lead to. So it's important that we don't fall into sensationalism, but at the same time, it's also very important that we do pay attention to what's going on. Um, I know there's a lot of people that are talking about how there's all these different train derailments that are happening and whatnot, and I'm paying attention to them. But something to keep in mind is there's roughly 1,000 to 1,200 train derailments a year. Roughly. So there is a lot of train derailments, so not every single one is going to be something significant so we know like there was the one right after ohio and houston where that also contained chemicals but nothing really came of it they cleaned it up just fine and and moved forward so it's just very important that we keep a level head keep focused obviously keep scripture wide open and just pay attention to what's going on as long as we don't fall into sensationalism that's that's the important thing pay attention but don't fall into it uh, finishing this off though, finishing off, finishing off the Ohio thing, something that just doesn't add up back in November of 2012, a train with, you guessed it, vinyl chloride fell off a bridge in New in New Jersey. So they were shipping vinyl chloride and it derailed and fell off a train in New Jersey. That train had a uh, hundred, 
120,000 pounds of the vinyl chloride in there, and they evacuated the area for three weeks. So keep these numbers in mind. This is important. 120 pounds of vinyl chloride, and people evacuated for three weeks as they cleaned it up. This train in Ohio had 1.1 million pounds of vinyl chloride, and they only evacuated people for five days. So this is a situation of why are they treating this payload, which is, what, nine times greater than what happened in New Jersey, why are they treating it so so much more softly than they did in New Jersey? Something does not add up makes you go hmm it's a chin scratcher hmm there's deception behind this guys they're doing something with it this isn't just a string of coincidences that's a whole lot of quinky dink if you want to add it up that way so there's a there's a train here that's two weeks in a row that i i have terrible situational awareness there's there's a a, a, a lane we'll go with a lane of things that just that's a whole bunch of coincidence coincidence that doesn't add up there's deception behind this there's plans behind this i don't know what it is but something is wrong something is off with this so pay attention to possibly what could be coming from this uh one of the theories that i've heard and i can't confirm it so asterisk here but i do want to let you guys know maybe you guys can find out Something that I have heard is um, a part of the new, a part of the Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 uh, situation is if certain land, certain areas is considered too contaminated for people to live in, that the WHO themselves can come in and buy that property. So that is definitely something that you guys can maybe look into. Um, I've heard quite a few people talk about that before, so something to keep in mind so